This is the new Kia EV6, and it's a bit like my Samsung Galaxy Fold because it's Korean and extremely high tech. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this car. I'm gonna actually use it to cook some food as well, which is a bit odd. Obviously, I'm gonna take it for a drive, talk you through the exterior and the interior, and I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design. When I saw this thing in pictures, I thought it looked okay, but here in the flesh, it is a really striking car. I really like the full length light bar. It looks especially cool when you turn the lights on. There are kind of elements of a uh, Aston Martin DBX about it, but that's no bad thing, is it? And look at this down here, some of the coolest reversing lights I've ever seen on any car. One thing I'm not so sure about though is the sort of fakey venti stuff here, but I do like this jingle jangle jewelry effect. That's nice. Anyway, let's move down the side. So alloy wheels start at 19s, start at 19s, going up to 21s. So these are the mid-level 20s. They look nice. I I love the swooping roof line of this car, the wide haunches, the side sills. It looks awesome. It really does. And it's got a, like a cab forward design, but it still looks very sporty and beefy at the front. I think this is a great looking car, especially in this paint scheme around the front. It looks good here as well. There are a few fake vents, but really that's very little to complain about. It's a good, good looking car. Now Kia's trademark grill is known as Tiger Nose, but they've renamed it for this EV as the Digital Tiger Face. Okay. Now this car starts at £41,000 and it's not bad considering the amount of spec you get with it. And if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price on your next car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link below the video to go to CarWow. Alternatively, after this video, you can simply Google Help Me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. I love the interior design of this Kia EV6. It's really, really nice. The textured effect on the dash and the different lines, the blue lighting here, the screens. They actually have a coating on them which helps prevent glare so that you can see them even in direct sunlight. The quality is pretty good as well. It's only when you go further down that things get a bit scratchy, but it's to be expected really. I love the look of this center console. It does wobble a bit, but you know, these shiny bits on it, really nice. This armrest is comfy. I like the fact that you've got a gear selector as a rotator rather than a, a gear lever like you get in some of the EVs, which is just pointless. Steering wheel's cool. <laughs> it's a really nice design. I'm impressed with what they've done. And the seats are lovely as well. This kind of velour effect. Apparently the seats are made out of recent cycle bottles. It's all very good actually. Tech, that's excellent as well. So it's got Kia's latest infotainment system. It's responsive enough. The graphics are fine. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Now, if you want to use the climate control, they are touch sensitive buttons, which aren't quite as easy to use when you're driving as actual physical buttons that move, but it's not too difficult. And you can do the temperature using a rotary knob. And look at this, you can toggle between shortcuts for the infotainment system. And you've got these buttons on the steering wheel as well. And you use the ones over this side to toggle through all the information on the digital driver's display, which which is nice and clear and very well laid out. Good comfort in here. Lots of adjustment in the steering wheel and in the seats as well, which is good. It feels very roomy as well because there's a load of space just here where you can like store things down here. You've got various charging ports, USB and USB-C. There's more storage under here. You've got cup holders here of different depths. So that's a shallowy one. That's a slightly deeper one. Probably should do them the other way around. Otherwise you'll end up doing that thing where you lift off the top of your coffee. Well, that stereo shut up. I knew I shouldn't have pressed the blooming radio button. Let's go to the map. Please refer to the map. Again, interrupted quite a lot here. Let's continue. So <laughs> big glove box. Look at the size of that. It goes back such a long way. And the door bins are huge too. And the lined with felt so things don't wrap around in there. Good if you've got a posh glass bottle like this. Hmm. Oh, one last thing I want to show you. This is very, very good for vain people like me. These have to be the biggest vanity mirrors on any car. Hmm. I don't look as good as I thought I did. The Kia EV6 feels nice and spacious here in the back seats. So look how much knee room I've got. It's insane. Now, even though this car is slightly shorter on the outside than Kia's big Sorento SUV, because the wheels on the EV6 are further apart, the front and the back wheels, you've got more interior space. And because it's an electric car, the batteries are underneath the floor, which means you get a completely flat floor because unlike in a internal combustion engine car, there's not like space for the exhaust or the drive shaft from the engine to the wheels at the back. So look at all that space we've got. The disadvantage of 
having batteries underneath the floor does mean that there's not that much of a distance between the floor and the seat so you can feel a little bit like you're sitting a bit too low but it's not too bad it's just a shame that you can't really stretch your feet out that much under the chairs in front because they are quite low but still there's so much room it doesn't really matter one minor issue could be for really tall people the headroom it's all right for me but people over six foot may find it a little bit tight in fact there is a bit more headroom in a ford mackie and if you click on the pop out banner up there you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car there's very little to fault about this look you've got some posh airplane style pockets on the seat backs cool little usb charging ports there another thing i want to show you is this look fold down this you have a cubby area there and if i do that it becomes a cup holder look at that it's like magic <laughs> there is some through loading but the space isn't that great you might fit some skis through there just the thing i'm going to show you is this look yeah you can recline the back seats you can also put the rear windows all the way down i like that that's a good feature and if you need to carry three in the back at once because this seat is flat and you got all that space in the footwells it is doable as for fitting a baby seat in the back this roof does slope inward so you do struggle to get a real bulky rear facing seat in but the doors open wide which does help so there's lots of room to maneuver once you've got it underneath the roof the only problem is that the isofix anchor points are a little bit hard to get at so you end up jumping away to get them located but once in place there's loads of room because there's so much space between the front passenger seat and these seats that even with those bulky rear facing seats you're absolutely fine the person in the front passenger seat isn't wanting for space at all now let's talk about the boot. So as standard, you get an electrically operated tailgate and you have 520 litres of luggage space. However, a Skoda Enyaq has 585 litres of space. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description. So look, no load lip really to lift things over and you can fit the load cover underneath the false floor. It's not the easiest thing to get out. Look, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. You can do it. <laughs> You're just going to know the right way to do it. I'm going to use that in a second because I want to show you something else. There's quite a few of the cool features, like we've got nets here, we've got 12 volt sockets, and I like this. You can release the back seats and fold them down from those handles in the boot. And this one, this floor, oh, look, you can slide things to the front because you have a continuous floor there with all the seats folded. That's quite good, but I'm not done yet. You see you have some more storage space here under this lovely clamshell bonnet. Look, we have a front boot, a fruit. So it has a capacity of 52 litres, unless you have the all-wheel drive version, which has another motor at the front, and therefore you have less fruit space. It's only 20 litres. And that brings me on to five annoying things about this car. If you have the top of the range car with the Meridian sound system, the subwoofer for it goes in the boot and it takes up 40 litres of space, which means you don't have so much underfloor storage, which is a bit annoying because that's where you'd ideally keep all your cables. Whereas here on this car, they have to just be there. Hmm. The head restraints protrude quite a way forward, so they push your head like that a little bit, which really isn't great for your posture. You want to do more like that, but you can't. For a practical family car, the rear visibility is I mean, just look, can't see much, can you, out the back window? And these rear pillars create massive blind spots, which is really frustrating when you're pulling out of junctions. Depending on your preferred seating position, the steering wheel can sometimes block the top of the screen. It's a bit of a bugger. When you're creeping along in traffic, this car makes a weird groaning sound from its brakes. Have a listen to this. Sort of like the noise the tripods make in the War of the Worlds. You see? Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. It's five. Just like its sister car, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the EV6 has something called Car 2 Load, which actually sounds a bit rubbish, but it's actually very cool because it allows you to plug household appliances into this device here, then you can run them off the car's battery. It's really handy if you're on a video shoot and you're a bit peckish and you want to eat something appropriate. Look. The microwave works. Now we've just got to wait five minutes. So you may as well just swipe out. This car's heads-up display features augmented reality for the satellite navigation. So it'll actually superimpose directions on the road ahead so you don't take a wrong turn. It's a bit like the feature you get on a Mercedes S-Class. Cool. If you can't be bothered to walk all the way to your car, you can make the EV6 come to you. Just press a button and you can summon it. It'll come forwards. You can make it go backwards as well. Oh, that'll do. Oh, I think I can make it that far. You can also use this feature for getting out of and reversing into tight parking spaces. 
need to recharge your own batteries while you're charging the car, well, with the EV6, you can actually have a power nap while you're putting power into the car itself. Look, because the front seat backs will recline super low. Oh, and then you can have a nap. The EV6 has an amazing high definition surround view camera. I mean, look at that. And you can zoom in and out on the bird's eye view. There's lots of different views as well. So you can have a look around the car from different angles. And of course, the full 3D effect, BMW Styly, lovely. Now let's talk about batteries and charging and all that kind of stuff. So you can get a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which can give you up to 360 miles of range. You can get it with rear wheel drive or all wheel drive and power ranges from 170 horsepower all the way up to 325 horsepower in the four wheel drive big battery version. However, there'll be a high performance version coming in 2022 with 585 horsepower. So that should be pretty blooming quick. In terms of charging, the battery can charge up to 250 kilowatts. So then let's see what this Kia EV6 is like to drive. Now, underneath the skin, it shares many of its parts with the Hyundai Ionic 5 because Hyundai and Kia are sister companies. However, Kia has set this car up to be a little bit more sporty to drive because it's sportier to look at, isn't it? What that means is that the suspension is a little bit firmer. So you feel the bumps a bit more. So when you're driving around town, occasionally if you hit a pole, you just get a bit more of a jolt, but it's never uncomfortable at all. I think it's absolutely fine. And driving around town, it's fairly easy to live with. So the steering's nice and light the forward visibility is pretty good because you're sitting up quite high it's a comfy car and of course you've got regen effect for the motor so when you lift off the accelerator the car will slow itself as it recoups energy and puts it back into the batteries and you can increase the amount of the regen effect by pulling on these paddles here you can pretty much drive it on one pedal and not actually touch the brake pedal only for emergency stops and stuff like that overall this car is pretty easy to drive in town now, when you get out on a twisty road, you are thankful for that slightly firmer suspension setup because it means that this car doesn't lean so much in the bends as say an Ionic 5. Now you might wonder what that noise is. It's, it's because I'm getting too close to the car in front because that's actually our camera car and I'm getting the car safety systems warning me that I'm about to have an accident. And if I was to do nothing, the car would automatically break. So on a twisted road, this car does feel quite sporty, which is a good thing. It's not quite as sharp to drive as a Tesla Model 3. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. There's also a link in the description. Now, when you get out on faster roads, such as motorways and stuff, you do appreciate the fact that this car is nice and comfy to travel in. And it's reasonably quiet. Obviously, there's no internal combustion engine whirring away in front of you. The only thing you notice really is a bit of noise from the road, from those big tires. Other than that though, very, very relaxing. And you can use the standard fit automated cruise control. So you just turn that on and it'll do that thing where you use a radar to keep your safe distance from the car in front and auto steer to keep you in lane. Really takes the strain out of longer journeys. Another great thing that makes this car relaxing to drive is the instant punch from the electric motor so if you need to get past someone suddenly you just put your foot down <laughs> and you just whiz by speaking of the performance i think it's time to launch this thing this 325 horsepower dual motor version of the ev6 is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds but what will it really do well i've got my specialist timing gear up here i'm gonna launch it let's find out what we're we gonna get we have a time wow <laughs> It did it in 4.8 seconds. That's impressive, though it does feel really quick. So then what's my final verdict on the Kia EV6? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the Kia EV6. It's an absolutely brilliant EV. Plus you can use it to cook your dinner. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know if any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the Car Wow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching.